What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. Today we are back in some Rugby 22 because I thought a lot of people might find it interesting to know a bit more about the career, more specifically earning these new sort of R points that we have. I don't know if they have an actual name, but of course you've already clicked on the video. You know what it's all about. So R points in the career mode are the things you can see down the bottom here. I have a whole bunch of them. I have like 90,000. A lot of people are probably wondering, Mad Dragon, how come you got so many considering you're still in your first season with your creator team? I want more because they are used for an awful lot of things. The R points in this game now are used in all sorts of things, including in the the finance section here, you've got the ways to actually improve the skills of your players, the stamina recovery, healing, uh, in terms of actually upgrading your staff. It costs a lot to do and they can be a bit of a grind to get to. So I thought a lot of people might be interested to know how to try and boost that in the most effective way, I guess you could say. So I'm going to start from scratch for you guys. So we're going to start a, uh, a new team. Here we are. This is my awful created team out of uh, everyone that we have left in my cards. So basically you want to be starting a new league. Of course, you're going to be starting off in the lowest division. We're going to be starting off in that and in the optional leagues of course we're not really going to have an option because it's going to be there we're going to opt out um, now we're going to have this question pop up which is do you want to participate in the pre-season now of course we're going to be pressing yes during this now a lot of people might be thinking oh these are just a bunch of extra games it's going to be a bunch of extra effort for me yes but this is where you really get to generate it as you can see on screen now we have four different games available this is going to be basically you choose what game you want to play and on what difficulty you want to play it. The teams go up in difficulty the higher you go, and you earn an increased amount of R points. Now, as you can see, you get 500 for each one you go up, which is fine, but it's not going to get us the big bucks. You start off with 800 down in the uh, in the bottom of the picture, as you might be able to see. Now, when you actually pick one of these teams to play, it comes up with the option of basically this new betting system, almost they've added, where you can put in a specific amount of tries you believe you will score against this team, and you basically get to put an investment of how much you want to basically bet on achieving that goal. So if I want to put in two tries and I'm going to bet 500 R points on it, I'll get 661. I get a bit of a profit, even though I actually get to win the game. And on top of that, you still get the 1500 for winning the game, which is all very useful. And basically, we're going to be utilizing this system in order to make the most out of it. Now, the way to make the most out of this is, of course, going over to the Legendary difficulty, which, of course, I know a couple of people might be struggling with at the minute, but, but staying in the Semi-Pro or Pro Leagues is absolutely fine. So click which difficulty you want to start off with. And basically, before every single one of these preseason games, you're just going to increase your investment all the way up to the maximum. Whatever you have is going to be absolutely fine. You're not planning on losing this money anyway. So the maximum you can ever put in in this game is 10,000. And as you'll see here, as we increase how many tries we think we're going to score... Uh, it slowly goes up and the, the sort of most average way to say this is it goes up by about 20 to 25 percent for every try you add on and as you can see this money gradually increases and gets more and more all the way up to 10 tries 10 is the maximum and 10,000 is the maximum you can bet and it pays you back 61,917 R points now of course you've got to actually be able to achieve this which can be a difficult um, considering whatever difficulty you put it on and whatever sort of length time game you are actually going to be playing so a couple of ways to help you increase the likelihood of being able to achieve this goal so starting off one of the best ways to do this is of course going in and buying potentially some booster packs you can go in there i would actually recommend going for some of the epic backs players or maybe some of the superior backs depending on the currency you have in the game in sp points um i got quite lucky i actually got quintapaya and gary ringrose in just one pack so i actually managed to get my center partnership really well worked and that helps you get a bit of speed injection, and especially when you're playing some of the lower league teams, helps you get some of those tries. Um, if you can't afford enough for packs, you do have the My Missions, which I think probably a couple of people might not actually know about, but you can go into the My Missions. You can just achieve basic things in the game. There are four grids that you can swap over one by one. And after you've completed all of them, you basically go in and press the A button. It'll do a whole thing, and that way you can unlock some packs for free just by doing basic things in the game. So I thought a couple of people might find that interesting. The very final 
final thing that we want to be doing in this game is going into the option setting. Now, when you play career mode, for whatever reason, it does drop the difficulty down to amateur, which is very strange. Don't know why it does it. You can up it if you want to, but for this purpose of trying to boost this R points, it really doesn't matter what difficulty you actually do it on. But the thing we're going to be looking at the most is going to be this match length. Now, of course, you want to score 10 tries. 10 tries in five minutes is a big ask, even if your team was rated really highly. And when we do this career, when you start off, your team is rated much lower. So personally for me, I would recommend doing a 15 minute game. However, if you're not particularly up to speed with the game, if you've only just got it, probably worth checking out on a 20 minute game. I know it sounds like a long game, but it will certainly be very, very helpful. So what I'll do is I'll chuck on screen for you guys now so that you can see some of the games I had previously. So starting off in game one, I basically uh, managed to win that game 91-0. You will, of course, be exceeding that try limit. It does get a little bit boring towards the end. That's why I tend to stand, stay around the sort of 15 minute marker for a game. And as you can see from this game ending 91-0, I did manage to win 8,921 points. So that was my second or third game actually in the career mode. And I've already managed to get nearly 10,000 credits. In the second game, I put down my 9,721 points that I had completely available to me. And I managed to turn that into 39,326. And in that game, I actually won that one by 163 points to seven. After you get your 10 tries, it does get a bit boring. You certainly move to just getting a couple of drop goals and playing with one hand and whatever else you want to do. Um, and then I've gone on since then, racked up more, and then I'm able to put on my 10,000 credits for every single game. Um, now, of course, when you're actually playing a game, you can begin to lose a bit of track of where you're actually at, because once you're at sort of six, seven, eight tries, if you haven't got all your kicks, the scoreboard not looking like how you want to do in order to keep up with it. So a basic way to remember how many tries you've actually successfully scored, if you're not very good at just remembering counting as you're going, in order to score 70 points in a game using only tries and conversions, you will have, have to have achieved at least 10 tries. That's a perfect um, score there. If you get 10 tries and 10 conversions, you're at 70 points. If you know you've missed a couple of conversions, but you're not sure how many tries you've scored along the way, as long as you get over that 70 point margin and you've only scored tries and conversions, you've already done the 10 tries. It means you don't have to keep track of how many you've actually scored. And basically, just after a couple of games, you're able to boost up like me now on my 95,000. So that way, when you're actually going in, doing a couple of uh, increases in your training facilities and stuff, for me personally, I'm going over to the staff straight away and you start racking up. The first one is, of course, 3,500 hour points. The next one here is going to be 69.10. So you're going to increase that one. We'll do that for the physiotherapist because I want to get my stamina up every game. The next one after that is 20. Thousand, so we're going to confirm that one as well. And then the very final oh, sorry, we've got one more after this. It's 47,000 for the next one. And then the final one is 53,000 uh, points, which I still currently don't have enough to do, which is crazy. It just shows how much you actually have to spend in this game. But yes, the first one starting off there is the 3,500. Then you go up to the 6910. We'll do it on the scouts as well. This will help you find better players if you haven't got them already. The next one is 13,000. So we'll upgrade that one as well. And then the one that comes after that is 26. Now, it's important when doing this to always try and leave at least 10,000 so that when you're doing your next game, you can still keep that 10,000 bet going, keep with the strategy. And basically each game then that you come up against in the preseason, you will always be able to generate a huge amount of money. 10 tries at 10,000, of course, giving you that 62,000. But I thought a couple of people might just find it interesting and might not be using this actual mechanic in the game to the fullest extent. Personally, I find it the easiest to do these games, especially against some of the created English teams. Um, they tend to not be as good as the licensed teams as well, so keep an eye out for that. But I hope you've enjoyed this video today, guys. If you have found it useful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up as it does really help the channel out. And if you want to see more from Rugby 20, including some of the talks we're going to be doing about the official Six Nations coming out, make sure you subscribe to the channel just to keep up to date with all the latest videos as they come out. I hope you've all enjoyed today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.